Church is never intended to be sit still, behave, and, and, and ah, here we go. So anyway, we're going to do three things today. I like to know up front. I like to know. Can he stand going to a restaurant and, and seven courses, and you only get to know the first one? You know. I like to know what's on the menu before I take one bite. And so here's what's on the menu today, guys. Three things. The greatest record-breaking moment I can find in the Old Testament. That's the first one. The second is the greatest record-breaking moment in the New Testament. And the third one is the greatest record-breaking decision you can make as a believer. And I promise you, applying these three biblical principles deep into our being, you can, you might not be like my beautiful sister-in-law, Linda, who broke the British record at 14 years of age for the British school marathon champion. Uh, What do you call it? There's four in the race. There was me, Linda, no, no, I'm just kidding, it was four ladies. Give it up for that record breaker. Come on, come on, come on, guys. We all want to be a record breaker. Well, you can, you can, because if the Holy Ghost is in you, you can be a record breaker. We're going to dive straight into, straight into Exodus 3, uh, Exodus 3 to the first, probably, this, this just blows it for me, because... Well, I'll read it to you. If we can have the next slide up, please. Exodus 3. Here's my favorite record-breaking moment in the whole of the Old Testament. There are many. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law. That's a miracle on its own, eh? Getting a son-in-law to do that for you, eh? But my son-in-law, he, he's, he does more than that for me. Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led the flock far into the wilderness. Step in the story, guys. Do your best to step into the story. Watch this going on. And he came to the mountain of God, Sinai. There, I mean, you just read over this. An angel of the Lord appears to him in a blazing fire in the middle of the bush. Moses stared in amazement. And I'm sure there's a hundred reasons why he did that. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it did not burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't the bush burning up? I've got to go and see it. He makes the biggest mistake in his life. So when the, the Lord saw Moses coming closer... To take a closer look, God called to him in the, from the middle of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses, here I am, here I am. <laughs> and then God says, don't come any closer, boy. Don't come any closer. The Lord warned him, take off your sandals. No big deal. But if I asked you guys today, just, hey, let's do what this guy did. Let's see what happens if we do this. How many of you go, I'm not taking my shoes off. But I can't wait to see you struggle to get the cowboy boats and bits off, Lindsay. That's going to be a fun moment. How many know it's not a sin to have fun in the house of God? Ah, The joy of the Lord goes before us, the Bible says. And so, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. This verse has always baffled me, but today we're going to have fun. So here it is. You're standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When Moses heard this, He covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Guys, when you've got a previous, when you've got a track record like Moses, who killed the guy in broad daylight, you and I, I think we would maybe hide our face as well. 
In fact, I think I would just bolt right there. I think I would just like bolt. But Moses is about to discover one of the greatest record-breaking moments in history. God keeps no records of wrongs. He speaks to this killer on the run. And he took off his shoes. What's the big deal of that? He's walking in the shoes of unforgiveness. He's walking in killer shoes, and you can't bring anything unholy into the holy presence of God. Every time we come here at 10 o'clock, we come here into the holy presence of God with awe and respect. And the band, when they come up at two hours early, to prepare that menu we had this morning, doing everything they can, including fireworks, to present the presence of God. It's so precious. Hebrews eleven twelve speaks it this way, and I will forgive their wickedness, and I'll remember their sins no more. That's got to go deep today, guys. Because otherwise, we will remember everybody else's sins and we will remember our own and keep ourselves trapped in unforgiveness. So when God take, tells Moses to take off his shoes, it's a message for all time. When we come into the house of God, every time Elma steps on a platform, in her mind, she takes off shoes. Because today the Holy Spirit is going to show you and me what shoes we're wearing. Ah, oh, come on, Jimmy, give me a break. You know, I, I know what shoes I'm wearing, but do you know it's possible? You know why the Bible says, search my heart, O God, and see if there's any wrong shoes I'm walking in. That's the Jimmy Dowd's version. It's great to regularly come before God and ask Him to search our heart. Do you know it's possible to be walking in the shoes of anger or regret or bitterness, disappointment, or even the other shoes Moses was wearing? Who am I? When God asks you to do a great thing like Moses, come on, God, who am I? Depression, the shoes of sadness, the shoes of fear, the shoes of hopelessness, the shoes of anxiety. We can be walking in shoes that are lead, lead boots, and until the Holy Spirit shows us, a top businessman in the north of Scotland called me uh, a week ago. He says, my daughter has barely gone out of the house for two years. She's got to go out to do her exams, but that triggers her. It's riddled with anxiety. And my youngest son is the same. He won't come out of his room in two years. He needs to go to college and sign up. I told him to go to them and identify the shoes and pray the shoes off. Three days later, he called me to say his daughter had went to every exam, completed it, and I do not recognize her. She's literally 100% anxiety-free. And he says, but I only talked to her, but my son was listening. And he came in this morning and says, Dad, I'm applying for college. I'm going to sign up for college. And the son also is 100% anxiety-free. Give it up for the Lord Jesus Christ, guys. Come on. This is what's on the menu today, guys. This is for every one of us to walk in. He wants to make this available to every one of us. And if you will humble yourself and make a commitment to, I'm going to dig deep. 
I'm going to get in, into the depths with Jesus. I'm going to do some serious business with Jesus and give him 100% permission to show me what shoes I'm walking in. So God is going to reveal that to us. Could we have the next slide up, please? The next greatest record breaker. Stephen Payton, where are you? Come on. Took me five attempts to break that. Let's see. Let's see if you're a real muscle man or a pretender. And let's see if you're any good at catching. No, okay, that's a bad start. Okay, up you come, pal. Who, who thinks he could do it in one? Who thinks he'll take two? Hey, come on then. What? I might need you in a minute again. Don't just take a seat there, Steve. Take a seat there. <laughs> We're going to go for the second record breaker in the New Testament. The one that broke every record you can imagine. So, when Jesus hung on that cross, all 12 of his closest friends and things bolted. Everyone. Everyone. And they were in blind panic. The game's over. He's gone. What does the future look like? But Jesus was working on a record-breaking contingency plan that's so exciting. If we can get this today, our lives will change forever. I promise you. So here it is. He's working on a contingency plan to take them to the next level. He said to them, he said to them, in fact, it is best for you that I go away. What? Come on. It's best. He's breaking every record and they don't get it. Because if I don't go, your helper won't come. If I go away, then I will send him to you. That's you and you and you. I'll send him. I'm sending you the record breaker, the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was on the earth, he was on the earth as a man. He could be present in one place at one time. So you sometimes would have to travel hundreds of miles, struggle, blah, blah, go to find him. But he said when the record breaker comes, it's a billion times better because the Holy Spirit is not limited to one place, one person at one time. This Holy Spirit can be in every place, every person, every single moment of every day. Let's give it up for the living God. The record breaker. He's the record breaker, the miracle worker, the comforter, the teacher, the, healer, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. This is word for word Bible, what I'm sharing today. When He comes, it's so much better for you. I hope you're feeling that better already. I don't know if you're aware that the Holy Spirit is here. I don't know if you're aware that the angels are here. I don't know if you're aware that every cafe and restaurant and gymnasium may go, He is there. Because Jesus promised it in His Word. The Holy Spirit, the record breaker, is coming. And when you keep yourself with clean shoes, I got up to preach, I arrived to preach to 2,000 Zulus in Durban. The pastor looked at me, he said, they won't listen to a word you're saying. I said, beg your pardon? He says, you don't understand Zulu culture. He said, unless you've got a shiny belt and shiny shoes, you're no one. I was like, whoa! I had to hunt high and low to find shiny shoes and a shouty belt. And I think, at first I thought, they're stupid. But then now I'm more thinking, well, maybe they were on that Moses thing. Maybe, maybe it was symbolic and spiritual for them 
that you don't go in anybody's house and not take your shoes off. Elmer's a stickler for that. Jimmy, but when she's not in now and again, I'm in one of these, you know, these rebellious moments, Tim, I stuff brilliant. I'm wandering about the house in my shoes and that thing. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> in three days, I looked at the sole of my shoe and I thought, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead, what's on that shoe? And I had to mop that place so that not even the Holy Spirit could find that dung. <laughs> but when the Holy Spirit, he broke all records, he broke all limitations, there is no limitation on you accessing the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the miracles of the Holy Spirit. Every place, every time. But I try, you know, without even realizing it, I keep putting limits on the Holy Spirit. I'm in the gym, and I got one of these brilliant new apps that my son-in-law sent me to try to get me in shape. And it's one of those, every minute, right, do this for a minute, right, don't talk to your granny this minute, rest for a minute. You know, every minute, it's cont- I'm halfway through. I'm not lying. I hear the Holy Spirit said, invite me to come. I, uh, well, could you just hold on a wee minute, you know? I want a program here. Invite me to come. I want to show you who I'm working on and who, who, who you're going to speak to. And I was like, um, see, the problem is, in your day, Jesus, you didn't have one of these brilliant apps, you know? That's not how they work. I'm having no argument, but I thought, stuff it. And in that moment, straight across the gym, was this guy, six feet plus, muscles like Popeye. I'm showing my age now, but there we go. Big muscles, big huge muscles. He's got the tattoos. He's good looking. He's good looking. And I've been looking at him for months. And he had one of these wee man bun ponytails. I thought, I'm not talking to him until he gets rid of that, because... Uh, he looks too much like a warrior. So every week I'm plucking up courage and the Holy Spirit says, this is the moment. And it's one of these when you get a super fit guy. He's the most ribbed guy in the gym. It's not protocol to interrupt him. But I went straight up. All right, big man, how you doing? And I thought, you know, you're as well just diving in, you know. And... Uh, A wee guy in Sweden, you know, the Swedes are gentle. They said, Pastor, you have a most unusual anointing. I have a name for it. I said, what would you call it, son? He says, I call it the brutal anointing. (laughs) Ah, that's a nice wee compliment, son. That's better than a poncy one one. But anyway, there we go. So, so, big man looks at me. And this is what he said. Oh, man, I'm doing so much better. So much better. I'm getting right into the Bible. I thought I knew the Bible, but I'm getting right into it, and I'm learning so many things. He knew everything about me, everything about Aaron, everything about the Vine Church. This guy, I was like, what? And then a shorter beast, his friend, appeared. And Great guy, nice personality, muscle man. He arrived, and big man says, see him? I've got a problem with him. I'm trying to get him into Jesus, but he won't change his ways. I says, well, I'm finished talking to you. You'll change your ways, mate. And I wellied into him with my testing miracles, and he said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I do believe I do believe, it's not that I don't believe, but I said, yeah, but you're content staying a sinner. We had a holy, the gym was rammed, rammed every machine. We had a Holy Ghost moment. Guys, life is boring without a Holy Ghost moment, without divine appointment, and God has set many up for all of us if we just create the space and the time and put our watch in our Stephen Payton's gym up in hip pocket for 20 minutes. So, but he can't work where you're at. He can't work with your watch. He can't work with the, the straw you give him. He is a river. 
He is a river, and if we give him a little straw, you know, okay, I'll raise one hand, Jesus, but not two. Okay, I'll, I'll wiggle my bum, but I'm not wiggling my arms. You know, if we, if we give him a straw, you get a straw. But he's a river. He's a fire hose. And he wants to come like a tsunami today and flood you with his Holy Spirit. You could be wearing dry shoes, and you don't even know you've been dry for six, 12 months. Elma, my beautiful wife, went through a dry season. She was in a low place. Her mental health was under attack. Her confidence was shot. She couldn't even come to church for about a year. I persuaded her to go to a Holy Spirit meeting in Edinburgh, 2,000 people, and I promised to protect her. I said, we'll sit at the back, we'll hide, we'll just do the worship, and we'll bolt. And Mark DuPont, the preacher, got up. He'd just flown in from Canada. And this is what he said. The Holy Spirit says, I've not to preach today. That lady at the back, that lady at the back, the Lord told me she is to preach. He points to Elma. I don't know about you guys, but your wife has these amazing things on the end of her fingers that has the power to sink into your hand, you know. These nails that sunk deep in my hand. Don't dare let me go up there. You're going up. I said, I'm not disobeying the Lord. It's up to you. You could pick a fight. And I gave her a wee shove. <laughs> she went down, trem I'm talking trembling, trembling. And she just went to the front of the platform. I don't think she spoke for more than two minutes. She just said, well, all I know is, all I've learned in the 12 months is, when you come into his holy presence, you have to take off your shoes and let him do the rest. So I encourage you guys to take off your shoes, she says. Lie on your face and let God do what he wants to do. Came back and sat down. I thought, oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I think he was expecting more, but he got more because when she got out of the way, the Holy Spirit came down and swept through that church and did miracle after miracle. And uh, I managed, it's crazy, I managed to persuade her to go back to the next two nights. And this preacher who was booked and the flights paid, hotels paid for him to come and preach, did this three nights on the trot. Picked on Elma, then me the next night. We preached all three nights. And um, it's scary when you commit to saying, Holy Spirit, I give you permission. I give you time. And so the last slide, uh, three, uh, slide three. The greatest record-breaking decision you can make is to do what the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. Whenever the disciple has had the greatest need in their life, Jesus basically just said, give me your time. That's what he said, just give me your time. He said, go to the upper room and wait. Just give me your time. Go and wait and pray until, and the fire of the Holy Ghost came down. The fire of the Holy Ghost. They made the greatest decision a believer could make as they created a space. I don't know about you, but, you know, don't feel guilty about being busy. I'm one of these daft men that my brain says I'm busy when I'm no busy. It's constantly, oh, I've not got time to do this, no good time to do that. And the wife's like, you've got 10 flipping hours, stop moaning. But he's, you know, we sing the songs, I give you my life, I give you my time. And he said, I think he's getting to stage where he said, all right, I've got all that, no. no. How about give me your watch? <laughs> How about give me your watch? How about give me your phone? How about give me your, your heart? I just want your time. And so whenever Elm and I have visited any revivals, we've always heard Ephesians 4, 30, 32. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. 
We were actually living in a street called Greaves Street when I first read this and was impacted by it. And we talk about God says the humor, living in 51 Greaves Street. So were there other people. And he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieve is just like, don't bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit. And we're going to go into a time of forgiveness in a few minutes. We're going to have a few minutes' time. And I'm not going to tell the band when to stop. You just stop when you want. But if anybody is urgent or anybody needs to go, just go. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. But, but the Holy Spirit, as Lindsay was saying this morning, he's here. And he wants to do a deep, 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 deep beautiful, refreshing word. He wants to bring the fresh river, fresh hope, fresh joy. You know, I know what it's like, guys, to come into a meeting and be stiff as a poker. And somebody up front says, give somebody a hug. And I'm like, if he gives me a hug, I'm, I'm clocking him. I'm taking him out because I'm straw man. I only, I only allow God to work through a straw. And then he says, he takes me to the Psalms. They raised their hands and they shouted and they they danced. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. Aye, but you didn't have Scotsmen in the days, did you, when you wrote that? But here's the thing, guys. If we're singing, I surrender. I give you my all. When you surrender to the Holy Spirit and give him full permission, you can experience his presence, his healing, his love, and miracles. You could invite him to your workplace and see the power of God move like never before. So it says, get rid of all bitterness, rage. He's saying, take off all the shoes of anger and brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other. So, We bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit when we don't give him time. And we all know what it's like in this busy, crazy, mad world. But he wants a time when it doesn't suit us. At 12 o'clock last night, my phone woke me up. And one of my team in America said, my son's just in a head-on crash. He's actually ruined five cars now. I'm not sure what I'm going to say to him. I think he was like, pray for me, you know, that I don't go in with the wrong shoes on. That was 12 o'clock last night. Five past 12, Professor Kevin Jones texted me. Professor Kevin Jones texted me from there. He says, Jimmy, we're going 30 hours flight. Him and his surgeon friend, Sean Swan, to take the gospel into this dark, dark area. Would you stand in prayer with us? And I just want to encourage you. It's the most beautiful thing to have the honor to join in a person's journey and pray with them on the other side of the world. And the Holy Spirit, he knows you've got little energy and little health and little time. He's not coming in condemnation, but he just wants to heal that and tweak that so that you're back into the freedom. You're not driven, you're not under stress and pressure, but you're under this beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit, and he's leading you. So could I just have the band and Elma to the platform for a moment, please? Elma, we only really have one issue in our marriage. Well, actually, we've got many sometimes, but there are no big ones, but there is one big one. And, and I'm just breaking that record right now. So, Elma always goes, you never told me you were going to do that. You never told me you were inviting me to the platform. You never told me. And I keep saying, I don't, know, I don't think it's biblical, darling, but there are some things in life it's easier to get forgiveness than permission. (laughs) So, Kevin, 
beat her up till she comes up here, brother. But I just want to ask you as we're going to, in a, in a few minutes I'll get the band to play. They're playing the now, of course, and, and, and I'm going to invite you guys to do a couple of things. Whiffed. I knew there was a funny smell. She's got the cowboy boots off. I knew, was, what was that? Beautiful fragrance and skin. So, come on, Elma. Let me see if you could break it. Oh, no, I've not to break it. You, you have not to break it. How can I break it? Did the Holy Spirit tell you that you've not to break it? What is that? I've never seen it. I think it's one of your favourites, Val Dunigan. So, let's see how strong Alan Kelly is. Nearly, Alan. How many th say it? One. That's one. How many say we'll get it in one, two, or three? No, it's not. <laughs> come, come on. Come on. I, I don't think it is, no. Might be a trick one, Alan. Here and Might be a trick one. <laughs> you got a lot of work to do with the Holy Spirit, Alan. No, no. Right, on you go, Alan. On you go. No. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. No, no, here and here and. Last one. Try that one. That's a biblical one. It's called His Master's Voice. <laughs> Stephen, come on. Show him how's that. <laughs> How many think you'll get it in one? How many in two? How many in three? Right, Stephen, do your stuff. Wow! Right, Stephen, there's a prize. Try that one as well. I think that is a trick one. <laughs> Stephen, you, you, there's a special prize for the winner. You get to clean up that mess after church. <laughs> so, guys. Let's get real. Let's go, we're going to go deep. I'm going to ask you to lead us in a prayer to invite the Holy Spirit just to show you what shoes you're wearing. Those shoes, maybe they're just called distant shoes. John the Baptist said to Jesus, no, no, I'm not fit to tie your sandals. What's he talking about? He understood Jesus sandals were clean. He's sinless. And John the Baptist were not. But if you will invite the Holy Spirit to show you what shoes you're wearing. In fact, I'm going to invite us to do a practical thing. If it's possible, if you've washed your feet this week, if you don't, then Denny just Denny bother. If it's possible for you to take your shoes off right now, take your shoes off, quickly, 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 take your shoes. Even if you've got bunions, it doesn't matter. It, nobody's going to look at your bunions. That's great. Let's just loosen up a wee bit. It's not Santa. In, in the Old Testament, they did all kinds of things to prepare to come in God's presence. It's just a simple thing to say, God, yeah. If it's difficult for you, just leave it. But it's just a thing. Now, here's the second one. Could you take off your watch, please? Just as a symbol. Can you take off your watch and your phone and put them away? And don't look at them for the next 10 minutes? Just as a symbol. It's just a, it's not how weird. It's just like, God, you can have my all. You can have my time. You can have my life. I surrender all. And I'm going to, Emma's going to lead us in a prayer of repentance. And then if you want to go on your knees 
and you don't have dodgy ones like us, then that's fine if you want to stay seated. But let's give him time. He's here. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here. We thank you that you're here and you want to do a deeper work in each one of us. A deeper work in each one of us. And all you ask is, will you allow me to do that? Because so often he wants to do something in us, but we have our guards up, we have our masks on, and we don't want to do it. But Holy Spirit, today you said, Jesus, you said that it was for freedom. It was for freedom we would be set free. Some of us are walking around in chains, chains that bind us. I remember seeing someone in a church meeting one time and I turned and said to him, I just see chains wrapped around your neck, wrapped around your neck. And he just said, no, I don't know what that's about. I don't know what that's about. About two months later, he knew what the chains was about and how he deeply he, had, he was into something. So Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would move in each person. Oh, you come to give, bring us life, life in abundance. And so often we walk around with our heads bowed down because we've not even forgiven ourselves. Or we know we come before you sometimes and we say, God, forgive me, forgive me. And we walk away and the next day we come back with the same thing. And he's already forgiven us. I've done that on many occasions when I've done something that I think, maybe not even thought something in my head. And I thought, oh God, um, please forgive me. I hate what I did, I hate what I said. And he says, I've forgiven you, Elma, I've forgiven you. But I haven't forgiven myself. And then I come back again. And he says, I don't know what you're talking about. There is no record. There is no record. And I begin to smile because I've been set free. I've been set free. And I think that to be set free, you have to be willing to say, I surrender, I do hold my hands up. I do say, God, deal, I want to deal with this once and for all. And I just pray if there's anyone here that hasn't forgiven someone, then I'm telling you, it will affect your, your, your physical life. Something will be eating away at you inside. Something will be destroying you inside until you can forgive that person. It's not an easy thing to do, but he's not asking you to do it. You give it to Jesus, and bit by bit you will find freedom that you can forgive. Not in your strength, but in his. So Holy Spirit, I pray that we repent of anything that we are uh, uh, holding on to, that we've not surrendered to you. Those shoes that we've been walking in that are so heavy, I just pray, Holy Spirit, move. And I pray that those shoes that will have, have been taken off, I just ask that you tell the Holy Spirit right now, these are the shoes I have taken off. These are the things that I've been walking in and I no longer want to walk in them. That shyness, oh my goodness, that can stop you from having freedom allow the Holy Spirit to do a deep work today Holy Spirit we bring before you everything that we've been walking in that is that you don't want us to walk in Holy Spirit do a work today reveal to me even now reveal to me reveal to me because I don't want to walk another day in these shoes I want to be able to have clean hands and pure heart. Holy Spirit, come. We repent. Repentance. Oh, I love I do I love repentance. People say, don't speak about it, but when I truly, truly repent, I don't ever want to go back to that thing again. But when I haven't repented, I say, Okay, I repent, God. I'll still walk in those shoes. 
Repentance is from the heart. Repentance is says, God, forgive me. God, take away this from me because I can't do it myself. I repent. I repent. That means I just say, I walk away from this and I'm not walking back to it. Oh, the freedom that that brings. The freedom. So right now, I just, just ask the Holy Spirit, come before him, say, I repent of the things that I've been walking in that have held me back. Holy Spirit, have your way. Jesus, Jesus. You died for us on that cross. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that because if we don't do that daily, then we're walking in our own shoes. We have to remember that the Holy Spirit, that Jesus died and he gave us the Spirit. For anyone that's finding it hard to forgive, I pray right now, right now, that you would help them hand it over. They see you on the cross and say, hand it over right now. I hand that bitter, because if you don't, you'll become bitter. You don't want to get old and bitter. You want to get old and better. So today, I just pray you would reveal yourself afresh to each person. You would give them a lightness in their spirit as they give it over to you, as they give it over to you, as they give it over to you. In your precious name, Jesus. In your precious name.